What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to the channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year medical student and a biomedical science graduate studying at King's College London. And today is the 17th of March and we're officially five days away from the final medical school practical exam that I'll ever have for the rest of my life. All right, I want to pause the video here for one second, guys, because if you've been watching the last few videos of my channel, you're probably wondering why is Kenji still back in exam period, even though I've now technically passed all of my exams. And the reason being is that this vlog was actually recorded six weeks ago when I was doing my final exams. And even though I'm now technically a doctor, I still think this video has a lot of value showing you guys how I got from getting through all the way um, through my exams up until now where I am at the end of medical school. So sit back, relax and enjoy the rest of the vlog. Today I have a really interesting video for you guys. I'm actually meeting my friends and heading over to the hospital in round about 10 minutes or so. We actually booked out a whole clinical skills room where we'll be practicing all of our clinical skills, examination skills, and everything to do with that. I've actually been standing by the window here for the last 10 minutes as well, enjoying the UK sunlight, which we rarely ever get. So today's gonna be a really good day. I can feel it already. Um, my life is kind of actually all over the place right now. I haven't updated you guys in a proper vlog for a while, um, but as you guys can see behind me, I have all of my like, you know, bags. And the reason being is that Tomorrow night, I'm actually heading out, leaving this accommodation, leaving the hospital, and moving into my next accommodation again. Uh, the reason being is that for the last kind of uh, 10 weeks or so, I've been in this hospital here in Kent uh, doing my elective placement. So I've actually been in cardiology for the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been really, really good. But now it's time to move on to my next and final hospital placement, which is going to be in radiology and then my transition to F1 uh, rotation as well, which I'll be taking you guys along with me as well. So make sure you subscribe to not miss those videos. Without Without further ado, let's go ahead and get the vlog started. Sit back, relax, and I'll see you guys on the next shot. Yo, Kenji. Yo, Kobena, what are you saying? Good man, you? Not bad, bro. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm just putting on my trainers right now. All right, cool. All right, I'll see you outside, I'll see you outside in like five minutes. All right. All right, a bit. Bye. What are you saying? Guys, so welcome to the clinical skills room. What I'm gonna do is before we actually start getting uh, ready to practice, I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour around um, the entire room where we'll be practicing. So if I just quickly turn around. So this room is really amazing when it comes to actually practicing for our exams. The reason being is that it has a mannequin over there which we can use to actually practice our examinations on. Um, it also has like a bunch of, um, you know, drawers and stuff with everything we need. So for example, this is the um, emergency kind of uh, drawer area. Um, so we have um, drawers for different airways. So if you want to practice putting in different airways in, inside the patient, we can do exactly that using all of these airway adjuncts. Uh, we also have some um, you know, medications um, that we can also administer. So really, really good. And also an AED machine uh, to practice on, which is so cool. Laptop over there, obviously, to help us uh, if we need it. Uh, this is kind of where we sit and you know just study and um, get ready for actually you know doing the real stations. And here is our mannequin friend. So I'm going to call him George. Here's my guy George over here, um, and he's really really good because he can actually talk to you. Um, they can actually be someone in the next room, kind of you know pretending to be George, um, and he can actually give you all of the signs that we may see on a patient. So for example, he can actually breathe. You know his chest can actually rise and fall. If we listen to his chest with our stethoscope, we can actually hear sounds inside of his chest, which is so, so cool. So we can actually recreate what a patient would actually be like in a ward uh, as much as we can using my guy George over here. This is actually only one of three different rooms or four different rooms actually that we have here in my hospital. This is the mannequin room. Uh, next door, we have another bunch of different like mannequins and dolls that we can, you know, play with and examine, um, not play with, but uh, examine. So it's really, really good when we actually come to practicing for our OSCEs. And what we actually like to do is we'd like to do real scenarios. So I'll give my friend the mark scheme. You know, we have all of the mark schemes uh, right here from the books that we have. And then we'll actually recreate a proper scenario, time ourselves. Uh, so we'll actually come into the room like we normally would in our OSCE. Uh, we'll time ourselves. One person will be the patient. One person will be the examiner. And then I might be the doctor for that station. And then we'll take turns. We'll rotate through different stations. And hopefully that will kind of recreate what we're actually going to be having next week for our real OSCEs. Uh, so I'm going to be here for another couple of hours and hopefully get some lunch very soon because I'm already starving. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy what you're about to see. 
So we started off the session by practicing emergency airways. So you can see my boy Kobe over here practicing using a bag valve mask in order to ventilate a patient. He then moved on to putting in an airway adjunct in order to secure George's airway. We then moved on to practicing an emergency ATE assessment. And this essentially involves examining a patient all the way up from their head right to their toes, examining all of the relevant systems within their body. So that includes their heart, their lungs, their abdomen, and pretty much everything from their head to their toe. And also along the way, making sure to perform any life-saving uh, procedures or maneuvers if necessary. So in this emergency scenario, my friend Georgie played the examiner, I was the doctor, and of course, George was my patient. The emergency scenario that Georgie gave me was a pneumothorax, and essentially what that means is that George, my patient, had a collapsed lung and was acutely unwell. As I mentioned, I performed the examination all the way from head to toe, and along the way, I actually asked for any relevant investigations that I would ask for in a hospital. For example, in order to come up with my diagnosis here, I asked Georgie to give me a set of blood results and also a chest x-ray, and by interpreting these investigations and putting that together with my history that I took from the patient, I was actually able to come up with the diagnosis and also offer a suitable management option for the patient. We then practice our Veni puncher skills, which is essentially taking blood from a patient. And as you can see, these are all the models that we actually use in order to practice this. And in order to finish off our practice session for the day, we then moved on to practicing setting up an IV infusion. And whenever a patient in hospital requires any sort of fluids, whether that is bloods or just normal saline fluid, this is the exact equipment that we'd actually have to set up in order to provide the patient with those fluids. At about 5 p.m., we then called it a day and headed over to Nando's to have a nice relaxing dinner together. And while we're actually waiting for our food to arrive, we played a bit of Mario Kart in order to pass the time before my mango and lime chicken thighs arrived and let me know down in the comments below what sort of spice you have on your nando's food three days later all right guys so it is now the 21st of march at 8 40 pm uh fast forwarding a few days from when you last saw me in the last few clips uh, and my exam is actually tomorrow morning so i'm actually super excited and i want to kind of reflect with you guys about how i'm kind of feeling uh this close to my exam but yeah as you guys can probably notice from behind me this is my old setup uh so the ogs uh, on the channel may recognize this old setup this is actually the last hospital i was in before my elective um so i actually had to move all of my stuff and like my room is literally so messy right now because uh, i'm actually just moving in Long story short, my exam is tomorrow morning. I have to actually be um, at the hospital to register at 8.15 in the morning. So I probably will have to leave my house or my accommodation at 6.30 in the morning to get to the train station and then get an hour train into central London. So tomorrow's gonna be really, really tiring slash very stressful day. But yeah, I wanna kind of like talk to you guys about how I'm feeling right now. And the first point is that it's really weird. When I first started preparing for these Oscars a couple of weeks ago, I felt so like underconfident. Um, you know, after my last exam, I kind of took like a bit of time to just chill and not look too much into medicine obviously because it is my final year I wasn't that focused on like all the examinations and all of these things as well so it's been a while it's been almost a year since I've had an OSCE so obviously there's a lot of like skills and examination skills I just had to brush up on long story short I was you know feeling really underconfident and actually quite scared of these OSCEs what's really interesting is that fast forward two or three weeks now I feel way more confident and I feel like I'm ready for the exams tomorrow. And main point here being that uh, practice builds confidence, you know, so if you have an essay that's due in two weeks time, of course, like start preparing for it, but also realize that there's no point being stressed about it. There's no point being anxious about it, because of course, if you haven't started preparing for it, of course, you're not going to be, you're not going to feel confident about it, right? So the first point is that practice builds confidence and just trust that as soon as you start preparing for your exams, you know, writing your essay, you will get confident over time to the point where I am now, the night before the OSCE, where I feel so confident and I don't feel like there's anything they can possibly ask me that I hopefully, you know, wouldn't know. So that's the first point. The second point is, although I am feeling, you know, confident, I am still a little bit nervous. The reason being is that although this exam doesn't actually count that much, all we have to do is pass it. So the actual score we get doesn't actually matter that much. The last OSCEs I sat at the end of year four actually counted towards our degree classification. It actually counted towards our job application to be a doctor. These ones actually don't count. So the score I actually get as long as I pass doesn't actually matter. And weirdly enough, I probably feel more nervous now than I did back in my last OSCEs, even though the last ones counted. And I think the reason being is because of imposter syndrome, right? So this is probably something I've talked on the channel a lot, um, but right now I do feel a bit of imposter syndrome. 
The reason being is that when I go into the exam tomorrow, I'm not going to be introducing myself as a medical student. For the first time ever, I'm going to be introduce introducing myself to the patient as a doctor. So I'll be like, hi, my name's Kenji. I'm one of the, you know, the first year doctors here. And that is, although it's exciting, it's also super, super scary. And I think that's kind of why I feel a little bit nervous because of the imposter syndrome of crap. I'm entering an exam where I should technically know everything there is to know in the last five years. You know, they can ask me something that I learned in my second year of medicine and I have to know it and I'll be expected to know it at the level of a first year doctor. And I think it's kind of that fear that I should know everything that's kind of, you know, making me feel slightly nervous. But yeah, I'm hoping that tomorrow morning when I actually get to the exam hall, well, I'm not hoping, I know for a fact that tomorrow morning when I put on my clinical clothes, put on my stethoscope, I will be ready for the exams. The imposter syndrome will have gone and I will have hopefully got myself into the mindset of a doctor and, you know, feeling like I'm going to smash these exams. And, you know, it's, it's always funny, like my ritual, my ritual leading up to the exam is always have my AirPods in um, and blasting some really inspirational like music that gets me hyped up uh, and gets me to a point where I'm ready to fake it uh, till I make it <laughs> and I'm that close to making it. Um, so those are kind of the, you know, the two points I'm uh, feeling right now. Um, as I said, tomorrow I'm going to leave really, really early, get to the um, hospital super early. I like to get there at least, you know, 45 minutes an hour early to actually like settled in settle in and let my nerves kind of calm down as well and although i'm supposed to register at 8 15 we actually go into quarantine for a couple of hours because they don't want us sharing all the questions that are coming up so everybody even if my you know my exam doesn't start till 11 a.m i have to be there to register at 8 15 give my phone away give my ipad away and sit in quarantine waiting for my exam to start um so we don't you know don't share the answers and stuff like that it's currently yeah like i said almost nine o'clock so um today's my final day of preparation i pretty much just chilled uh went sh food shopping cooked some food um you know chatted to my friends i also did about one and a half hours of practice with nasir as well and for the rest of the evening i'm just going to chill uh iron my clothes for tomorrow and kind of get uh in the mindset of going to bed pretty soon so that's my ramble um i'll try to get a clip tomorrow on the way to hospital or just after my oskis so i'll see you guys on the next clip all right uh good morning guys it's currently 6 a.m 6 30 a.m and i'm about to leave to go to the um the train station to get my train to the hospital and i'm feeling good man i'm just really trying to remind myself that everything i'm going to be tested on today is everything i've been working so hard on for the last five years and also like <clears throat> of course we'll get nervous i definitely am feeling a little little bit of um you know butterflies in my tummy but just trying to interpret that as excitement rather than you know fear or nervousness um you know the response we, we get in our bodies um to being nervous is the same as you know being excited so i can either tell myself that i'm nervous or i can tell myself that i'm excited so whenever i feel this way i always try and get my airpods in you know like, like i said yesterday put in some good music and try and pump myself up and make that turn into excitement rather than um you know fear also remind myself that these people, the patients and the doctors want us to pass. You know, we've gotten through all five years now. This is the final exam and they all want us to pass as well. So just reminding myself that as well. So I'm gonna head to the uh, train station and I've actually packed my lunch, no, my breakfast. So I'm gonna have my breakfast on the train because um, it's about a 45 minute journey and I'll see you guys when I am done. Good morning guys, uh, it's currently the 23rd of March and it's 10.30 in the morning. Uh, today my OSCEs are actually later on in the afternoon. I need to be in London and register at uh, 12.40 I think. So I'll be leaving very very shortly to head over to my OSCEs. But I realised that some of you guys may not actually know what an OSCE is. I don't think I've actually spoken on my channel about what OSCEs are. So I thought I'd take the time to let you guys know what it is. Uh, but first off, uh, yesterday actually went pretty well. Uh, we had six stations yesterday. Uh, I think I failed one station, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it was my last station I think towards the end I just got a bit fatigued a bit tired and I made the wrong diagnosis and let the ball slip a little bit um, but, the one, but the rest of them went really really well so I'm hoping that will all average out and I'm hoping that today will be 100% positive but you know hands up um, I definitely may have failed one station but it's all good it's all good Today is my second day of the Oscars, like I said. We have another six stations today, and we're nearly there, we're nearly at the end. I've woken up a bit later today. I woke up around 8 a.m., so I am feeling a bit more like energetic, and I feel like I do have a bit more energy compared to yesterday when I woke up at 5 a.m. to head into London. Um, but okay, so in terms of what OSCEs are, essentially OSCEs stand for Objective Structured Clim Clinical Examinations and they're pretty much kind of, um, you know, MMIs. So if you've ever been to like a medical school interview before, you know how the, you know, interviews are structured. We're all in one big room, so there's around eight of us per kind of circuit um, and you're all in one big room and the entire room is divided into six different stations. Um, so you start um, on the outside of the station, you have two and a half minutes to read the vignette, which will kind of explain what the station 
station is about and what you're expected to do. And then once a timer goes up, you have to go into the station and there'll often be an examiner who's examining you, who's a doctor who's you know examining you and seeing how you're performing. And there'll also be a patient who you have to talk to, take history from and make a diagnosis. Or sometimes they may just be a mannequin. You may have to do like a practical skill, a skill like take blood, put in a cannula, put in a catheter, or there may be a mannequin that you have to ex uh, do an emergency examination on. And that's kind of how it works. So you go around the entire room until you've done each individual station, uh, until you get to the last station and then the time is up and then you move on to uh, well to go home and then you come back for the next day for the last set of oskis so six stations yesterday six stations today and then afterwards we're finally done we're finally going to celebrate but yeah in terms of how i'm feeling right now i'm feeling pretty good and um, right now what i'm focusing on is of course I'm focusing on the Oscars, but I'm also focusing on what's coming afterwards. I'm really looking forward to tonight, you know, meeting up with my friends, having a bit of a drink, and you know, just just, just celebrating the fact that we're actually done, uh, finally. Uh, and also, I'm going to Barcelona tomorrow morning. Uh, my flight's at like 6am tomorrow morning, so I'm really looking forward to just travelling and having a bit of freedom, a bit of fun, until I'm back on Monday for my next clinical rotation. Um, I'm also thinking about uh, graduation, so as soon as I woke up today, I had a bit of butterflies in my tummy, put my earphones on straight away and as you guys know you know blaring out some music that pumps me up and thinking about how happy and amazing it'll feel to actually walk across a stage and graduate and finally become a doctor. So that's really what my mind is on right now uh, and it's making me you know feel a lot better for the Oscars, making me cope a lot better and making me you know take the feeling of nervousness and turning that into excitation. Uh, so that's highly what I recommend if you guys have something coming up that's making you nervous, uh, try and take those nerves and make it into something positive. Try to think about how good it will feel to be on the other side of your exams, the other side of your essays, whatever it might be and think about it you know and then hopefully that'll make you happy and pump you up to actually go through this last hurdle of actually going to sit these exams. So that's what I'm feeling right now. That's what I'm thinking right now. Um, I want to leave in about 10 minutes to get the train into London. Today I'm actually at a different location. Yesterday I was based at King's College Hospital. Today I'll actually be based at St. Thomas's Hospital, um, which is next to like Westminster Bridge and all those like, you know, fancy parliament buildings. Um, so yeah, super pumped. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog so far. I'll try to get some clips tonight of me up my friends and stuff if I don't forget. Um, but otherwise, maybe see you guys in Barcelona, maybe end the vlog here, I'm not entirely sure. But I'll see you guys on the next clip. We're done, baby, we're done, let's go. So after the exam, I went straight to Guy's Bar, which is a bar on my campus to have a few drinks with my friends to celebrate the end of our exams. I then went home to sleep for about three hours before heading to the airport to catch my flight to Barcelona, which is what you're about to see in the next clip. So we're out here in Barcelona, the last clip you probably saw was me suffering uh, during the exam period. But we finally made it to the end. We're out here having some tapas, having some, uh, some drinks. Uh, we're going to take a walk to the beach as well. Feeling really good, feeling really happy uh, to have made it. Uh, and I'll probably update you guys and have a final chat with you when I'm back in London. So here for three days, getting our flight later on today actually, because we've been here for two or three days time. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And that was a busy but hopefully exciting last few days in my life preparing for my final exams ever in medical school. Before you guys leave, if you want to keep up with the rest of the story chronologically, here are the next videos that I filmed on my channel, finding out that I actually passed my final exams and that I'm going to be a doctor. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting me on my journey to be a doctor. This isn't the end of my day in the life vlogs, we're just getting started. Stay tuned, make sure you like and subscribe with notifications on to never miss another upload and I'll see you guys on the next video.